Hey everyone. Um, so thank you all for coming. Uh, it's an honor to be able to present. Um, and it's much warmer up here, so I'm looking slightly more presentable than I was in my hoodie. Um, so I'm Frida Polly. I'm one of the co-founders of Pymetrics, the company that you're going to hear about now. We do um, talent assessment and uh, analytics for human capital management. Um, I'm going to let my amazing intern, um, Missy, do a lot of the presentation because we like to train people to um, to grow at Pymetrics, even though we're fairly small. And um, But I'll be here throughout the presentation and afterwards if you have any questions or um, didn't want you to think I was passing off a you know, ancillary function to um, someone else. I just wanted to give somebody a chance to to try presenting. So without further ado, I'm gonna let Missy take over. Great. All right, so um, I'm Missy Lafferty. Like Frida said, I have been interning with Pymetrics since the spring. I um, come from an HR background, so I have a personal interest in this product um, before I came, and now I'm an, M an MBA student at Columbia Business School. So that's a little bit of my, of my background. So we're gonna talk about Pymetrics. Um, and first of all, addressing the problem. Um, so hiring is challenging. Um, right now, a lot of hiring that's done, even by very, very large corporations, is largely based on gut instinct. Um, so you do things like resume reviews, phone screens, interviews, you know, and there's a lot of people involved in the process. They're all kind of giving what they think is, you know, they, they say what they think the right fit is, but ultimately you're not dealing with a lot of hard data when you're making those decisions. Um, that's unfortunate because turnover is very, very costly. 60% um, of an employee's annual salary is lost due to turnover. So if you lose someone, it typically costs about 60% of that salary to replace them. Um, 90 to two, it's 90 to 200% if you include training and lost productivity, and um, you're wasting 6% of your operating costs. So if you can find some kind of method to save that money, you're actually saving corporations a lot um, in the long run. So this is a little background on Pymetrics. Um, you just met with Frida. Um, the other co-founder is Julie Yu. Both of them have PhDs. They um, study neuroscience. Frida also has an MBA from Harvard. Um, so this is a little bit about the team behind Pymetrics. Um, Pymetrics is based on an automated um, software as a service platform. It uses neuroscience tests to assess candidates. Um, and it uses data science algorithms to predict a career fit. So we'll talk a little bit about that process and I'll actually show you a demo but this is just some background. So, um, so what is Pymetrics as a product? It's a complete assessment. Um, that we can analyze candidates across 49 key cognitive and emotional dimensions. So when you're looking at where this fits in a hiring process, it's typically at the beginning of the process when you're looking at every single person who's applying. You can use Pymetrics to screen in people based on cognitive and emotional dimensions that you, um, that you can assess. Um, we replace questionnaires with performance on neuroscience games, which can't be faked. So what does that mean? Right now, when you're looking at competitors in this space, um, you know, you can think of something like the Myers-Briggs. Now, that's a little bit outdated, but that's usually what current tests are based on. It's the kind of test where a candidate is asked, you know, do you enjoy working in large groups? Do you, you know, how would you rate your analytical skills? It's all text-based. Text and honestly, when people are doing an assessment like that, it's either very transparent what the company is asking. So if you're asking, do you enjoy working on teams? The answer is always going to be yes. <laughs> um, Pymetrics gets around that by having people play games. And they're not assessing what they think their own personal strengths are. They're actually being tested on what they are. They use hard science using validated and well-established neuroscience game-like tests. Um, that have been used for decades um, for other kinds of um, purposes. There aren't any questionnaires, there are no text questions. So here are some um, images that give you an idea of what the games are. So there's you know, a balloon game, eyes test, all different kinds of things where you're playing on your computer um, to answer questions about yourself. Um, instead of using statistics, um, they use machine learning on big data. And um, they use algorithmic matching. So data science determines which attributes predict success for a given job or even company culture. So this, um, right here, what you're seeing is an example of the output that a company would see. So it shows most important features of a model employee. Um, and there's things rated on here like lack of impulsivity, attentiveness. So this is basically showing what one person would look like. And I'll give you some details on, on what that would look like for a particular job. Um, so what you're doing first is you build an employee profile. 
So current employees take the test. Say you want to use um, you know, your sales team and you want to build, you, you want to hire in sales. You have current employees take those tests and play the games. The, you apply that data and combine it with performance data, um, and then you get a custom profile built of a model employee. So that shows you algorithmically what you're looking for when you're doing this hiring. Um, again, this is the output that I showed you earlier. You get a model um, employee profile. So it says, okay, of all these people that we've tested within the company at different levels of performance, this is what you're generally looking for. Next, you screen your candidates. So you have everyone who's applying for the job take the Pymetrics assessment early on, typically when they're applying for the job, um, when they're you know, sending their resume at the very first step. So candidates complete these tests. Um, the candidates compare, um, you compare the candidates to the model employee profile. So you'll say, okay, this person is an 80th percentile fit, or this person is a 20th percentile fit, and then you can actually compare which things are strengths and weaknesses. And the candidate also can receive a fit score, and that's something that's also, pers um, the company can personalize that. So the final output, candidates are ranked and compared to the model. So here you see five different profiles, and you can see, okay, candidate one is a better fit than candidate five. Um, and then at the bottom, you can see how that person compared. So it's possible that someone um, here, the person is different on effort expenditure. So um, the model employee, we want someone who's very sensitive to high reward. This person has middling, um, but they might still be a good fit based on their other attributes. So Pymetrics can be used for staffing, recruiting, development. It's a tool that you can apply getting external candidates. You can also apply, um, apply it for internal matching. So you have people you want to recruit into a big department from an entry-level pool. You can apply that test as a career development tool as well. Um, so it's really, again, customizable. Um, some examples of clients, um, Pymetrics has served top three consulting firms. They work with top five investment banks and top five hedge funds. Um, here are some examples of how they've helped those companies out. So they reduced talent screened out before on-site interviews by 50%. Um, they increased conversion of summer to full-time hires by 16%. And ultimately, um, that accumulated to $1.2 million in direct savings in, in the Summer Associate Program. So you can see how being able to expand your candidate pool and you know, screen, screen out or screen in people based on hard data can save you a lot of money rather than just looking at a pool of candidates and say, based on a resume, this really fits what we're typically looking for. Um, for a hedge fund, Pymetrics was able to improve accuracy of employee placement from 60% to 95% and cut the time of correct placement by 6 to 12 months. Again, uh, Pymetrics data can look at an employee and say, you know, this person is going to be a good fit, whereas before you're looking at someone and seeing how their performance is over time. So it can save companies a lot of time um, in aggregate. Finally, Pymetrics is not simply a recruiting platform, it's a career development tool for employees. Um, so Pymetrics um, started at Harvard Business School. They have a large base of um, MBA students who have taken the tests. Um, they've also done it at Wharton, Stanford, Columbia, um, and they have um, 30 job and 10 company profiles built from the database so far. So, you know, so far I've talked about examples where a company says, all right, we're looking for this specific kind of team member for this company, but they have generic profiles that companies can use. Um, so some profiles that are available, for instance, they have things for accounting, advertising, marketing, you can see all the functions listed here, um, as well as large companies. So looking at students who've gone to those companies. Um, there's also cognitive and emotional profiles, so you get a lot of feedback if you're the candidate taking the test. Um, in, the, in the one used for MBA students, so when I took the test, when I first started, you actually get feedback on what each percentile means. So if it says, okay, you're in the 50th percentile for impulsivity, what does that mean? What can I do about it? Uh, Pymetrics will give you feedback. So that's the um, background. Now we're going to do a demo and show you some of the games that you would take if you were a candidate. I'm going to just demo two because um, there, there are a lot. There are 20 games that we put on the platform. Um, we just want to give you a flavor for what they look like. Right. So, um, so this is a very simple task, and I'm just going to ask you guys to kind of follow along. And again, in case it wasn't clear, a lot of these, all of these tasks were developed um, in the lab and in the clinic over the last uh, 10 to 
15 years. So we didn't develop any of them. Julie and I didn't put them up in our um, basement or our backyard the other day. Um, so they've all been scientifically proven and vetted by an army of neuroscientists across the globe, and they've been used in labs and, and healthcare clinics, um, again, in lots of different countries across the globe. So we know that they work, um, and, and we're just applying them to assessing human capital as opposed to the other things that they would have otherwise been used to assess. So this test, all it's going to do is show you a set of eyes, okay, and then you're going to have a multiple choice uh, array of four answers, and one of those answers is the correct expression that the eyes are expressing, and it's made purposely hard. If you saw the entire face, it would be quite easy to say what the face was expressing, but it's made more difficult because, you know, interpersonal interaction can be can be more challenging because it's fast-paced, and so this, this test is sort of meant to, to simulate that, and again, this test was developed to kind of um, be an EQ test of how well do you read emotion on people's faces, and it then correlates with real-world um, attributes of whether you are or are not so good at this task, okay? So again, if you don't get them all right, it's normal. There's 36 questions. The mean is actually not 36. There are a lot of questions that are harder, and, you know, it, you know again, people range on, on all ends of the spectrum on these tasks. So there's really, um, it's not about always doing perfectly on every test. It's more just about assessing your own strengths and weaknesses, so. And feel free to, to shout out what you think the other's eyes might be expressing. Playful. Playful, like very good. Annoyed. Okay. We're getting a couple of people upset. Zyra. Zyra, very good. <laughs> Assisting, very good. Fantastic. Worried. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Fantasizing, very good. Okay, good. So you get the point. There's 36 of them again. There's like, and there's a normal spectrum. Okay, I mean, you know, it goes. It, it, like I said, you don't have to get all of them right. Um, there are certain functions that you might not actually want people to be good at. Right? I mean, there are certain functions that require lots and lots of hours in front of a computer screen doing data entry, which, you know, somebody who's super social and loves to go out and interact with people, you know, which might correlate with having a high score on this test, you might not actually want that in certain functions, right? So the whole point of this battery is that there's no right and there's no wrong. It's about finding the profile of the, of the employee or function that you're trying to, uh, trying to either recruit for or staff internally and then trying to figure out what the attributes are of that employee profile and then mapping people onto them. Okay, so that's just one example. Um, I'll give you another example. This one's a little bit more, um, well, you'll see. So this test is going to seem a little bit, I don't know, I don't know what it's going to seem like. Anyway, so um, if you see a red, so I'm going to ask you to play along, though, okay? So if you see a red circle, I'm going to ask you to, like, clap your hands, slap your legs, do something that makes noise, okay? And then if you see a green circle on the screen, I want you to do nothing. And we are changing the stimuli color for those of you in the room that are colorblind. I apologize, you can't tell the difference. That will change, but um, but anyways, I just kind of want you to play along, and that's all we're going to do for, for a little while, okay? So again, red circle, you're going to clap your hands, and then green circle, you're going to do nothing. You ready? what this test assesses? Impulsivity. Very good. Impulsivity. So one of the big things that this test is impulsivity, okay? So, and again, you might think, oh, to be impulsive is terrible. Who in this room thinks they may or may not be slightly impulsive? Okay? So impulsivity, for example, has been linked to greater efficiency in the workplace, okay? And sort of a getting it done attitude, right? So you can imagine that in a job like sales, you might actually want a certain level of impulsivity. So you don't want to 
wait around and like you know the, you know it's, you know sort of like work up a client that's never going to close. I mean, so so again, there's like you know, and for other you know roles in corporations, you might not want somebody to be impulsive. For example, in accounting, you may want someone to not be overly impulsive. So just saying, I mean, right? And um, so and the, what so impulsivity and what else is the other flip side of that? Do you think that it's measuring? Yeah, like basically attentiveness, right? Like how attentive are you? Um, and so again, like different ranges of attentiveness. In some instances, you might want to be very attentive. In other cases, not. So those are just two very simple examples of the of the games. Um, again, they're not they're they're exercises that have been you know used in lots of different situations. Um, there's lots more. You can go on our website. You can take the assessment, um, and it gives you a lot more information about um, the product, the team, and um, and what you might use it for. So, and I'm we're here to answer any questions you might have. So, yes. So in a small business, there might be 50 people. Mm -hmm. Of the 50 people, there might be five of them that are doing sales or engineering right. or whatever. Right. Right. Uh, if you look at a LinkedIn job listing, it's yep. on fire if there's 50 people that apply to it. Right. Right. Um, how is it that you can get a sample that's big enough? to match with the pro profile of people on the other side. I think where's right. the big data part come in? Right. And where's the bottom of where it's really practical for you to develop your own sure, profile? Sure, exactly. Somebody right. That's a really good point. So, um, okay, so you had asked, like, there's like five different parts of that question. So, um, so we do have generic profiles that we've built um, from people that have been in roles already. And for those, so those would be best if you were in like a smaller or medium business where you don't have enough people to actually build out your own custom profile, but you wanted to get some sense of whether somebody would be a good fit. Um, the minimum threshold that we, that we suggest for any position that you're gonna model is 30 people. And ideally we'd like it to be 50, right? So again, if there's 50 people in your entire company, then it would be harder to, to do that, right? So then we would suggest going to one of the more generic profiles, which by the way, I mean, we've had a lot of, we've been able to show a high degree of fidelity even just using the, the more generic profiles. Um, the big data comes in in that, so some people, like if you went to talk to a statistician or you know, they'd be like, oh, 30 people, look at that, it's just a tiny sample. And it's, well, it is a relatively small sample if you use statistics, but if you use machine learning and you gather um, a lot of data points on one person, so whenever we put somebody through an assessment, we gather thousands of data points on them, as opposed to a questionnaire where you get like 50 answers or 100. Um, and so because we gather all of that, a lot of data points on a, a smaller number, we're able to build profiles that are actually quite accurate, even with a, a smaller sample size than is traditionally thought to be uh, representative. So, does that answer your question? Okay. Yes. How, wor how worried would you be about overfitting in that case? Yeah. Because if you have a lot of data right. points and you have right. a very small sample, right. then some of those data points will, will be very specific. Right, so that's where machine learning comes in. So I don't know how familiar you are. And my co-founder is the data scientist. I'm the lowly neuroscience PhD. Um, so uh, basically, when you do machine learning, um, you basically you avoid the problem of overfitting. And if you want to talk about it, we, the vast majority of them don't have any. I mean, so first, so first of all, we picked tests that we knew didn't discriminate against protected classes, right? Out of the, so we picked 20 tests. There's hundreds that we could have chosen from, right? So that's point number one. Point number two, we've done our own internal testing to make sure on, we've run our own studies to make sure that that's um, not true. Thirdly, whenever we do client work, we also triple check that that's not true. Um, and yeah, and then again, and the literature also would support. I mean, again, we picked tests that we knew wouldn't, wouldn't discriminate. So, and again, so I have a technical manual. I'm happy to send anybody that has any concerns. And we're, I mean, it's interesting because we actually have been tasked by most of the clients that we um, are currently working with to be used as a tool for inclusion, right? So the way a lot of, the, the biggest problem that a lot of companies face is that they feel like they're missing a lot of candidates that they would potentially screen out on resume review because they don't look like what they're looking for, right? And also there's just a very large volume of, of candidates that come in through resume. So what we are often what we are often tasked with is help me find out of this vast pool of resumes that otherwise might end up in not getting a great look passover, help me find those people that I might otherwise overlook. So it's actually kind of flipped on its head. You usually think of assessment as screening people out, but typically we get asked to if we're being used in a recruiting um, uh, format to, to screen people in. So, yes. Uh, when you were showing the types of organizations that yep. you work with, yep. it looks like it's principally managerial, professional level. 
yeah. to deal with um, clerical, administrative? You know, we, we haven't, we could. I think that segment of the market is um, is better. It is, uh, ha there are companies that have developed, you know, customer service um, assessments or call center assessments. I mean, so we feel like we don't add as much value in those cases because those assessments already exist and ours is more of a soft skill assessment, meaning it's not, you know, I, I don't know if it's like a highly technical position. You know, we're not doing any kind of hardcore assessment of a technical skill, um, but it could be used in those situations for sure. Yes, it's not limited to professional or, or knowledge workers. Yes. Um, in terms of the performance data, so matching performance yep. data against the uh, actual test data, yep. Yeah, so basically we get um, we get the data is whatever it, it's performance review data usually from the company. Um, and so we get so the way we build the models is we have employees take the tests, um, typically using an anonymous code so that we never know, like we can't ever trace the data back to employee so and so at this firm. And the performance data is also given to us in that format. So again, the 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 company scrubbed it in, in terms of names and gender and all the rest of it, and all we get is what bucket of performance they fall in, whether it's you know lower quartile, higher quartile, middle somewhere. So it's subjective in the sense that it's not like how many, you know, what what was your sales revenue last year, although we could use that, but it's as objective or as standardized as the companies try to make it in their performance review process. So yes. What in one of your slides, uh, and when you're talking about your your customers, yep. you talked about improved accuracy from yep. 65 to yep. 90 percent. Yep. Accuracy in terms of what? Six right. months later, a hiring manager said yes, this was. Yeah, well, it was. Yeah, it was actually on back tested data, but um, but it was basically they were using some sort of internal screen to try to determine um, whether somebody would be a good fit, and it was kind of you know using sort of more old, more of the older old fashioned um, types of methodology like questionnaires and statistics, and they weren't really getting very good read on whether people would or would not be a good fit, whereas we improved it to 95% um, based on, indeed, whether somebody ended up being sort of in the bottom or top. Okay. Yep. Yep. Uh, I think there was a hand back there that's been up for a while. Yes? Yeah. How, much is, how lucky is it for this type of game to be, uh, it's a game in some ways, and because yeah. of web, it's a lot, a lot of it is published online. Because I play that same game on Facebook. I kind of poke it. Yep. So how big is your sample set to ensure that this doesn't get gained? Because that's really just to get free from some of the tests. Right. Um, so there are a few ones like that one where it would be possible if you had seen it before to like get the right answer. But you would, you know, the the vast majority are more like the one with the red and green circles where you're kind of at some sort of natural set point of impulsivity and attentiveness. Um, you would say if you're judging for spontaneity, I would purposely. Right, but the point is, but the, again, so we've all been trained that we want to ace a test, okay? Right? We all want to, we all want to ace a test, right? There's no way to ace it, right? You're trying, you're because if, again, if you're, you don't actually know what it is that you want to do well and poorly on, right? So, I mean, that's a little bit. I mean, you, you like I said, you know, if you're in a particular, if, if you're modeling a particular function, you might actually want to be more impulsive, right? So. I mean, it, it, again, if you go down that road of trying to game the system, I think ultimately you're just going to end up with results that are that are not the greatest. So it is an issue. I don't I don't know if I have like the, a satisfactory answer other than, um, yeah, the best thing is is to just kind of perform in a way that you you think you're doing your your own personal best. So yes. Um, the cost structure depends. It's typically, if you're using it for recruiting or staffing, it's on a per seat basis, um, like a per hire basis. And then if the, for the development instrument, it's just per test. So we try not to um, make it more expensive if you want to screen a larger pool. It's just how many people are you planning on hiring, for example, using this instrument. So. Time for one more. Okay, sure. Yes. Will companies typically run parallel testing in this Absolutely. Yes, absolutely. We're usually run in parallel. Well, usually the way it gets implemented initially is that nothing changes about their recruiting process and they just add and they see the results. So of course, we always recommend a cautious approach in implementing any kind of new strategy. And again, like I said, usually we're used to actually increase the initial pool 
um, rather than, we, we, to date we have not ever been used to like screen people out, it's more because people think they're missing people and they want to use us as a sort of an effective way of getting more qualified leads, so to speak, that they otherwise wouldn't get, so. Great, Thank you. yeah. Are your apps uh, in Flash or are they, because I noticed- They're currently in Flash and we're building out um, an HTML5 version of them, although the, the vast majority of these tests, because they require sort of like um, reaction time and accuracy. We wouldn't want to be like doing them on a mo mobile phone or something or a tablet um, because that wouldn't necessarily be the best medium. So again, we are going to be building out a version that's you know mobile friendly and all the rest of it, but that's not where we would recommend that most people do the tests if they wanted to get the best results. So cool. Thanks a lot, guys. Thank you.